Welcome back, old people. It's Old Man Curtis and Old Man Dan here for Tabletop Tuesday. Why Why do you assume everybody's an old people? Just because we are. I think a lot of our, a lot of our viewers are, are... Do you know something I don't? I mean, if you take a look at our analytics, the demographic that primarily watches us is between 24 and 54 with a higher skewing number of people that are 34 to 54. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. Inside baseball. Yeah. But, okay. uh, uh, if, if you are finding it offensive that I am referring to all of you as co-old people, um, Leave a comment, let us because know. Because all the engagement matters. And since you're old, you don't understand how YouTube works and we really <laughs> want that engagement. So that's just something to consider. Oh boy. We are back again right. with the second most popular show. On the No Games for Old Men channel, uh, a distant second <laughs> in comparison to yeah. Mac Warrior Monday, yeah, but yeah. still, I will take second place. Second is pretty good. <laughs> second is pretty good. So, Dan, how's your week been? How's everything been going? Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's been okay. It's yeah? been okay. B busier than I anticipated. Ah, but uh, with lots of stuff, I had car. Things that needed to be sorted. I don't. I don't drive much anymore mm. because all you know, I was work from home all the time. I'm home mm. all the time. I don't get in my car and go anywhere. And if I need to go somewhere, I walk because I live within walking distance of all the places I want to go to. So my car needed a smog check before I could get my new registration. And of course, the car didn't start because it's been sitting in the garage for months without being turned over so when we first the moved battery to Portland, we had like, the same no. problem yeah had to replace our battery yeah so yeah it's you know get it get a jump the guy the guy said drive around for an hour so i drove it around for an hour and then i went to the grocery store pick up something came out of the grocery store and it wouldn't start again so i was like oh god so i got a jump again and then i drove it on the freeway at high speed for like two hours and that did the trick so it's just stuff, you know. Wait, you live in California adulting. and you just said adulting. on the freeway at high speed. How is that possible? Uh, on the shoulder. Usually that's, you know. No, I, I got lucky. Uh, there's, and I'm not going to say which freeway I was on at what time because I don't want people to decide that that's okay to travel that freeway at that time. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Keep that secret. Yeah. Keep that secret. Mm -hmm. uh, on, and just because it makes for an even more awkward transition, it's time for our weekly progress. No games for old so, Dan, what yeah. progress have you made towards your kill team goals this week? You know, I had a thought. The kill team is the Grey Knights. Yes. And I primed them in Grey. Yes. So I think they're done. <laughs> they're ready. No, I actually did. I think I met my goal. I, what I wanted to do was just get everything base coated just so that everything, they weren't just gray blobs on, on the table. So I've got, I've got that done. What I have started to do now, however, is because I think I'd originally said in, in, episode one or two that I was just going, I was going to go with gray armor rather than right. silver. Right. But I didn't like the way it looked. So mm. I've started testing. I'm not going to do silver except for a highlight, but I'm going to mm. go with, mm. I'm testing gunmetal or, oh gosh, I can't remember the other one. Anyway, there's, I've got three gray metal paints in my collection so so i have started testing that to see if if i like that better and nice. i'm hoping i'm hoping i will i, I just they just kind of looked drab mm. um mm. and i'm not a skilled enough painter to be able to do non-metallic metal and make it look good so i think until i get to that point just so i don't have this gray knights kill team that i'm embarrassed about mm. i'm going to actually use metals so yeah that's, that's my next step i've also taken a uh, blue uh, blue tone which is the the wash of the army painters line they call it tone mm. and i am that's that's my my wash on the uh, 
the models. Oh, nice. Ma- making the crevices and the elbows and the back of the legs and like all the stuff that looks like there's breaks in the armor. I wanted it to be blue rather than black. So that's that's where I went with that, just to make it look a little different, I guess. I don't know, because the you know silver is a blue white metal. So right. I, I think I think the blue wash might look good. So uh, I'm going to give that a try too. So I think I, that's probably a really that. good idea. Yeah, yeah. I you know I find that non-metal metallics work really well for display pieces because it's designed to be seen from one particular angle with one particular thing. Hmm. I have never been a huge fan of non-metal metallics on on pieces that you actually play with. Because if, and for me, and this is, you can have differing opinions and I'd love to hear them down in the comments when it comes to non-metal metallics. It feels like you can pick it up from any angle and it's always going to look the way you want it to look. I also, yeah. So yeah, so I think I think you've probably got the right idea to stick with actual metallics, and yeah. I love the idea of playing with with different color washes. It's really easy to get into the habit of using just strong tone or nulin oil, <laughs> and being right. like, "Well, it looks done." Right. <laughs> looks done. Right. Yeah. 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 There was, a, and I kind of got the idea from a guy who, another painter. God, I always forget who these folks are because there's so many of them. Uh, and a user request, whoever we name, will be linked to down below in the doobly doo because we got a lot of requests for Sam Lens after that episode. Lens, I called him Link, didn't I? Uh, regardless, I found Anyhow, the correct. Yeah. Okay. I know who you're talking Good. about, so yeah. Good. So anyway, he was painting orcs, and he was using purple wash for the. You're nodding profusely. You you know who this person is? Yes, but I saw I okay, saw. Good. So you uh, can put a link in the doobly doo because I don't yeah. remember who I was watching when I saw that. I actually saw it with with um, Miniac, and he did it for the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk for Marvel oh, okay. Infinity Crisis. Okay, and I use that for my greens now, and it really helps them pop. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the next time I have some orcs to paint, I'll I'll maybe I'll try that. Okay. Good. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, that's some solid progress. Yeah, um, I felt really bad last week that that I had made almost no progress. It was not even worth discussing. Uh, so I, I wanted to at least meet the goal this time. So I feel like I got there. It's still, I mean, they're base coats, so they still look the simple. But yeah, it's there's a there's a a path to completion now. I can see it. Nice. Nice. Uh, about, anytime I get to use the zero graphic, I feel like. Uh, uh, yeah, that was rude, by the way, with the big the big <laughs> sound effect and the big zero across. I didn't make zero progress. Chris. I that used it on lie. myself in the first the one. Yeah. You lied to our viewers. Shame on you. Shame on you. I'm gonna put the shame <laughs> graphic up now. <laughs> shame. Uh, and how about you? What, what did you? What was your progress? Oh, um, goals. Do you want me to talk about? My no, goals? we'll talk about goals after. Okay, we'll talk about goals after. Um, I. And what uh, about you? What What were your? Well, you know, it's progress. been. It was a holiday week. Uh, there was traveling involved. Um, mm. Lots of lots of things going on. Um, but uh, you know, you set a goal, you want to achieve a goal, and what did I do? I achieved my goal. <laughs> That's nice. Even with traveling out of state for Thanksgiving. Even with traveling out of state and everything. Wow. So, yeah. So, are you ready for a slideshow? I am ready for a slideshow. Excellent. First of all, let's begin with something that the people who watched uh, our episode three may have seen in the comments. I discovered I missed a toe when I (laughs) painted my mutant. And so, uh, something that I did pretty quick was paint the toe on nice on uh, on my mutant that got done you can see he's got his nail i actually yeah. did some updating on the foot over here too we got some more rot added yeah and uh surprisingly good toenails considering. that right toe looks like it's got a little bit of, of fungal infection around the edge absolutely but absolutely uh, but otherwise yeah. yeah it's like well clipped for some yeah. reason yeah 
unless kind of. uh, unless those things those guys are like cats and they just like scratch at stuff to keep their keep their claws it wears filed down it wears yeah, they're around a lot of rusted metal it's like it's sure. like a file sure but the main the main goal was to get my lumber hulk done and lumber hulk is done ooh so far this one is actually my favorite the skin turned out exactly the way I hoped. We had, a, there are a lot of nice contrasting bits on it and the, the fly guts. shoulder. The guts look amazing with the, the yeah, you, like you said contrasting colors. You've got green and orange and like pink in there. and Yeah. That looks fantastic. Thank you very much. I really, really tried to work hard on what this this transition would look like. Uh -huh. So I used the vein as a hard line between where the ossification happened versus where there was still meat. <laughs> and uh, then we get on the side here, you could see, uh, you know, just, just there's foot, there's kind of a gray Hulk vibe going on. He's got the horn and bone growing out of his, growing out of his shoulder. Is that like cloth or something that's bolted There to his is, horn? yeah. So what on his that? horn, he's got a piece of cloth and for any of the patches or cloth or extra bits, I used red as just kind of a signature color because the Mechanicus wear red. So this is kind of like we tore part of them off and okay. as we stormed out of the engine room, took down the uh, Mechanicus. <laughs> okay. And then uh, here's the back. So he's got a bunch of pustules growing out of things. And then yep. he's got a... a open wound oh it's got all oh, the little of flies slime and maggots yeah look at all the little flies yeah oh good detail thank you thank you wow he's got scaly skin down here that matches what we saw with the uh with wow. the drowned hulk that dude that dude does his leg workouts not skipping leg day him he is he is doing calves sir yeah he's got some calves yeah. uh and then we've got fly shoulder uh -huh. With a slimy proboscis. That's pretty foul. Yep. And uh, and the glowing eyes. You can kind of see the side where there's there's uh, maggots and worms coming out of his gut as well. Nasty. I like... this, is, this is a detail oh. shot of that shoulder, that fly shoulder. Again, had some really good work with some contrast here. This is, uh, uh, what's it called? Rattling grime is the primary color on that fly, and it just it just it did a really good job of getting everything dark. And then I, I like, used yeah. I like the the detail on the wings. He's got these little tiny wings, like they almost look vestigial. Mm -hmm. But the fact that there's like a bluish tone to them, except for the ridges are white, that really helps those stand out. So that's apothecary white contrast paint over uh uh what's the color over rotting flesh as the base color oh wow yeah so everything just kind of has a bit of a sickly air to it which doesn't necessarily show up in these pictures because i i take all my my miniature shots with my iphone and sometimes the mm -hmm. hdr kind of changes the colors a little bit yeah yeah plus you know, our lighting setup is probably not the best for miniatures photography. I use the same lighting setup I use for my uh, self-tape auditions. So it's a ring light that is daylight based, that is really good for people. Uh, it just kind of makes it bright enough over in the corner where I, I shoot that uh, uh, it picks up, you know, it gets light enough, but I don't know that... <laughs> I don't know that it's necessarily doing the best job, especially <laughs> with the camera that I'm using. Uh, I, I've got, uh, I actually had to do like proper highlighting on his face and stuff like that to get everything looking right. And we've got some highlights on the, uh, uh, on his goggles that go over his face. Mm -hmm. He's got some gross teeth. And then here's, here's an even closer look at that wound. Just goo. That's nasty. Okay, so is the fly the fly is a part of him or it's bursting out of him? It's growing out of his shoulder. 
you can kind of see that better there. That's gross. Where it's just kind of, yeah. So it's a part of him then. He lost his arm, and he got a he got a fly shoulder. Does it have attacks? It Is does. It a weapon. Yeah, yeah. Ew. So uh, he also has a uh, uh, a charge spike attack. So he can charge from. He gets a he gets. It's called a spike charge. It gives him a free charge, and then whatever he runs into takes three mortal wounds. D three mortal wounds. So wow. yeah, it's uh, it's an impressive little attack there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so that that is uh, that's my lumber hulk. That was what I had hoped to finish. Dang. Now it's time for goals for next week. So, oh, Dan, boy. what are your goals for your Grey Knights team this week? I want to say that because I am because I'm testing colors, I want to have one knight done. Not necessarily one of the Justicars because those are going to take more work. And I don't want to use one of them as a test piece. <laughs> um, oh, I also put together the other three knights. So all 10 of them are now constructed, based, primed, and based. So, so we will we will now have pictures of knight. these additional three so here for you to see. I've got another uh, another warrior with a power sword. I've got... And then I put together the other two heavy weapons, so the incinerator and the sci uh, silencer. So all those guys are done now. Um, so anyway, so what I'm saying is I want to have one person tested and really lock down a procedure on how to how to get these how to get these guys going the way I want to do them. So, so like a solid test model. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So Dan's goal is Grey Knight test model completed by next session, by next recording session. Mm -hmm. Cool. I would like to have the Screamer Hulk done. And my stretch goal is to finish the Thrice Cursed. Oof. Which is the leader of the of the Gellerpox infected, and is going to require. I know he's going to require the most work. I know he's going to require the most work. Really? Uh, I've already gotten started on on Screamer here because I'm going to make him blue. Since everything is screaming, I yeah. kind of like the idea that he's screaming till he's blue in the face. But since <laughs> everything everything about his body is a face, his whole body is blue. Nice. So that's where I'm going with that. Um, but Thrice Cursed is like the only real like character. When in the in the data sheet for Kill Team, he's the only one that is like identified as like has a name, has independent thoughts, mm. isn't just completely driven mad by being you know fused with machine and and demon. So. I feel like he needs a little bit more, a little bit more care, a little bit more like painting a regular hero needs to be done. So uh, I think that's probably going to take a little time, but I'd like to get a solid start on him as well. We'll see what we can do in a week. We'll see what we okay. can do in a week. Yeah. So that's it. Dan's going to have a test model for his armor color all complete by next week. And I'm going to have at least the screamer butcher done but ideally, I'm gonna have some good work on on that on the thrice cursed as well, and that's Man, our weekly I feel progress. So far behind. <laughs> well, you're like almost done with your whole kill team. You know, I said that's our weekly progress, but the fact of the matter is, uh, everything that we're doing was originally based on this clock that we were gonna have to play in December, and right now because. Uh, our traveling to California is kind of up in the air. All this to say, we have no idea when or if we're going to be able to make it down for California. So the timeline on us being able to play this game with these two kill teams probably isn't happening as soon 
as we originally thought. Okay. So you got some time. Okay. Yeah. But I, I don't want to operate as such because then I'll just wait. I'll just put stuff off. I'll find other things that need to get done first. The, the deadline is and December then, 20th. And, and then I won't, I won't make any progress. No. So I'll have to, I'll have to really self-discipline this one. On December 20th, I'm showing up at your house. You won't be ready for it. It will be a surprise. I'm going to knock on your door. You're going to be like, how'd you get through the gate? And then I'm going to say, it doesn't matter. It's time to go to Geeky Tees. Hit it. Whatever you got. All right. Throw those dice. Yep. Yeah. Live under that fear. Done. When did you get here? I just showed up. Just now. Just now. <laughs> and that's our weekly progress. Dan, now it's time to turn to one of our audience's favorite parts of is it? Tabletop Tuesday. Okay. And that is other tabletop things. No games for old is it things or stuff? Uh, it's actually things, according to the title card. And uh, <laughs> changes have been made to our production documents to reflect that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, today's topic. Crunch versus fluff. What gets you into a game? And for those of you who may be uh, vocabulary new on this, crunch in a game is the the parts of the game that are fundamental to it, like rules. Uh, and it is the rules. It's just the rules, actually. It's, yeah. It was... It's... I was wondering how you were going to embellish that. It's just the rules. It's the rules of the game, how the yeah. game is played. Yeah. And the embellishment the, comes with the fluff. It's the fluff. And that's that the, the story, the world building, the, uh, the, the setting of the game, the characters of the game, all the, all the, all the fluffy bits that, that give context and, and meaning to the rules of the game as they're actually played. Right. Because tabletop games, role-playing games, they're a abstraction of what real life is like. I, I always get very uncomfortable with people that are like, well, could you really do that? And blah, blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> I can't really cast spells. <laughs> I can't really drive a tank. You know what I mean? Like we don't need to apply too much reality to this. The fact uh -huh. of the matter is if, if we have agreed to play this game together, I need you to yeah. agree that reality is not the, is not the baseline for this. It's uh -huh. a giant flying thing that spits fire is flying out of the sky. <laughs> that's, that's not how this works. <laughs> if you can accept that. I think swinging a sword 15 times in six seconds is going to be okay. <laughs> I think it's going to be okay. I think it is. It's just uh... how it goes. You know, lightsabers are light. They are manifested light. Do they have weight? I don't know. They look like they do, according to the movies. But at the same time, if I have a flashlight and I go, Vroom, that. <laughs> that was close. That was close. Oh, boy. But I promise you, that's how you win every lightsaber battle. That's <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a really good YouTube channel called Cell Sword, uh, and they 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 talk about like how you would actually fight with a lightsaber. They discuss the ideas of a lightsaber with weight versus a lightsaber that is truly just a blade of light. Uh -huh. And I 100% stole that move from from them. <laughs> Okay. Because because they said if you were in a fight with a saber made of light and all the weight was in the hilt, then the easiest move would just be just to spin it around, <laughs> just really small. You'd be especially if it cuts through anything, you just you just drill through. So, but that is that is getting us off topic. Uh, so Dan, what attracts you to a game? Like when you actually get uh, caught up in something. Is it is it the rules of the game that you're attracted to? And this isn't just for tabletop or role playing, like like even video games and stuff. 
because there are functional rules in video games when you look at the controllers and the user interface and things like that. What what gets you going? What what attracts you to a GOM? I the the fluff is the short answer mm. for me. I I have always enjoyed imagining the 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 game and more than <laughs> sometimes more than actually playing it imagining the things are, that surround it that always really gets me going i i enjoy that very much and i have always been well and maybe here's here's why i grew up an only child mm. and i grew up a reader so I read fiction all the time. I my imagination was very active as a child and then when I heard about Dungeons and Dragons as a kid it was that was just like this whole new like explosion of material that could be mined for stories. And then I started reading the, the Dragonlance books. And those are those are my very first. Actually, no, not true. The very first D&D related book I ever read was Spellfire. Spellfire? Spellfire by Ed Greenwood. It was a mm. Forgotten Realms novel. And I read that one probably too young. My mom bought it for me. <laughs> my mom bought it for me, but there's some adult content in it. And uh, anyhow, it's fine. Uh, I'm very well adjusted. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, it was just, and then I, then I learned that there were hundreds of maybe not at that time, but many dozens of novels in this world. And boy, it, it just, that's what I, that's what I, I, that's what gets me going. I guess I, I don't know how the, any other way to put it. It's, the rules are cumbersome. The, the <laughs> rules, the rules, you get guys that are like, well, could you really do that? Like you were just saying, you know, that's not fun. I, the fun is the imagining. And like what, like you say, like you always, you know, play the narrative. Play the that's, narrative. That's the fun. You're creating fluff in your own games. That I enjoy doing. Mm. So, um, yeah. And, you know, the rules you, you get. You get conflict and misinterpretation and, you know, you, you stop the game for 20 minutes so people can argue about whether th the the wording and ugh. <laughs> uh. it sounds like you've had some very um... we all have. It's yeah. it's yeah. And now we're we're relearning the GURPS game system and so it's like oh it's, i don't want to do this i i want to play <laughs> i want to play the game but i don't want to read this book just want to know the rules it's not, that's that's not the fun that's not the fun for me i don't care about that i mean i do because i want to play it right i don't want to like completely cheat and you know thus become overpowered because that's not fun either the rules are there to manage to manage things so that everyone's not just Superman, because that's not fun. No. Superman is not fun. There's nothing fun about Superman. I actually find, and I think we talked about this in earlier episodes too, that the older I get, the more flaws my characters have. Right. The more fun I have playing them. Yes. I did a Star Wars campaign with a friend of the channel and director Zeke Pinero, and, uh, and in it I played a ex-imperial hacker who was running away from the empire and uh -huh. one of his faults was whenever he saw an imperial patrol he would panic and try to escape and we ended up on a <laughs> casino world and stormtroopers came through and i had to pass a shit ton of like it's not a will save i'm going to use that as a short the shorthand because it's not the star yeah. wars equivalent yeah. yeah i had to like keep my cool to not escape from my companions because I was actively trying to 
fix a game by hacking into oh, it and cheating. Okay. And I saw an Imperial Patrol come through, and I was like, uh, <laughs> gotta go, gotta go. And it was so much more entertaining and engaging, and everybody was like, "There's a pat- he's going to freak out. <laughs> like, you know, it, it added so much tension to yes. that game. It felt, it just, it felt like a movie. It felt like... Uh-huh. Some, it felt exciting, and 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 those kind of things are way better than just being able to go in and hack and slash, and and win. Yeah, yeah. J- just solving every encounter with combat is. I mean, while combat is fun, solving every encounter by murdering everyone in the room, that gets old after yeah. a while. It's yeah. like, you know. Uh, I want my power Anyhow. fantasies to include being able to think my way out of a situation. Right, right. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. So what games have had the kind of fluff that still stick with you? Like, what what is what have, what have been things that you've stuck with? Like, I think it's safe to say Dungeons & Dragons and Warhammer 40,000 as a universe. Or have they? Like Oh, 100%. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, I have. I have read many, 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 many Dungeons and Dragons books. Um, I I hesitate to say Star Wars because it was it was fluff first, right? Be- before right. they started making games based on it, so that 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 doesn't count. Yeah. But Dungeons and Dragons and Warhammer were games first. They start as crunch. Very crunchy. If Very crunchy. you are familiar with old editions of Dungeons and Dragons and old editions of Warhammer, <laughs> advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yeah. my god! So rule. Oh, ugh. anyhow. Hashtag Thacko. So, what other systems? I you know, I think that's kind of it. I don't. I'm not really aware of not even just RPG though. Cause you, you're a video gamer too. Right. So what draws you in? Like, what are you, I, I know we're playing mech warrior, but like what else game wise? Okay. Well, here's uh, so mech warriors, an interesting example because from I have, we haven't finished the game yet. We're not very far in at all yet, but from, what I've read from other people who have played it and people who are commenting on our videos is that the the fun of that game isn't the story mm. of isn't the narrative of the game itself, but it's what happens while you're playing it. The different because every mission is going to go differently depending on how the the approach you take and if you've got co-op people and so uh well this this episode drops the day after our first co-op mission episode of mech warrior so hopefully people who are watching this have already seen that so they know that when you get three different people in a session together dynamics it's just, <laughs> people have different people have different ideas about what to do when you get into a situation and you know one person starts shooting wildly and one person hangs back and and we've all got different strategies and different reactions to things and that's for me that's the fluff of a game like Mech Warrior 5 that i enjoy I really enjoy uh, RPGs, computer-based RPGs, things like Mass Effect, mm. Dragon Age, Cyberpunk is, as of last year, last year, two years ago, uh, a, a new RPG. The Witcher, mm. amazing RPG series that is all, it's all about, and th- those developers have taken great pains to develop the world, the setting of those games, and that is what draws you in, the character interactions. There's plenty of really good 
fantasy and sci-fi RPGs out there. But those are the ones that really that come to mind right now as we're talking because they've stuck with me for years. And in some cases, I've replayed them. I mean, those are mm. games that take you sometimes 60 hours to play. Mm. And Or in The Witcher, <laughs> in the case of The Witcher, like, oh, Skyrim. There, That's a good <laughs> example. That's a good example. That's I've the got, game that could never end if you didn't want it to. I've got, yeah, you can, can you could play that game forever if you, if you didn't want it to end. I've got something like 200 plus hours in Skyrim, which I know is rookie numbers compared to some people who have put in thousands. They just go all over the place. Right. But it's, those are the, it's the, it's the story you create while you're playing the game. And some of them are more focused. Skyrim has a focus, but you could start that game and once you get out of the little starting area that you have to do, you could go the opposite direction of like, here's your first mission. Go to this town and talk to this guy. You could go like, nah, I'm going to go that way and see what's through that canyon. And you could spend 100 hours before you even start the game. Really. Right. Right. That kind of stuff fascinates me. Is there ever a game where the system or the interface or the controls of it are not great, but you play it anyway because you love the world of the game so much? Absolutely. Um, I'm struggling to think of one right now, though. Mm. But yes, there are, there are there's there's games I've played that the you know maybe it's buggy mm. or. You know, the systems themselves are very simple Mm. compared to others. But I enjoy the setting or, you know, there's something something else about it draws me in that sparks my imagination that allows me to continue playing when lots of other (laughs) players and reviewers based on the review (laughs) scores that maybe that game has earned uh, have have left for for something shinier. Uh, I, yeah, I can't think of one off the top of my head right now, uh, but I, the answer is yes. I get that impression a little bit with Vampire, but maybe that's just my... my. Well, yeah, it, Vampire, I really dig the setting there. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with the game mechanics, though, but I remember when I was exploring that game, reading reviews, people saying that the combat was, was too simple. Uh, uh. I, I don't, I don't find it simple. I, 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 I think I, you've I got lots of, yeah. you've got lots of options available to you, and it's. I'm wondering if maybe they thought the combat was simple because they just stuck with one thing and only did that one thing. Over, I do over, think over that again. there are probably some know, some optimized but, combos for that. That once you find those optimized combos, you don't do anything else. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I like. I like. So far in that game, I'm enjoying experimenting with different things because it seems like it's it's a different. <laughs> and who was it? Somebody somebody was comment. I think it was was it our friend Jeff? Was it old fellow old man of the channel? Jeff was was ribbing me about how oh you're supposed to be this this doctor, but you. Within five minutes, I immediately went to chomping on people right. and, and vampire. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, you are a vampire. It it you, you've got the thirst. You, yeah. You resist as much as you can, but if there's a bad guy coming at you, I, you know, this is my opportunity to have a snack. Yeah. I don't see the problem. I don't see the problem. We're going to make up for it when we eventually discover the cure, I'm sure. I mean, if people have been watching and keeping up, you've, you uh, like following in our D&D campaign, you've become the avatar for like the blood prince or something. You've become the champion for, uh, for the thing. Don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's we weird. Know. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's a, that's probably a pretty good example that that, that game uh, didn't didn't seem to get a have, a, wow, didn't seem to have gotten a lot of attention, unfortunately. But I think uh, it, it's a it's a better game than 
than word of mouth would suggest. I get that. I guess. I, get I didn't that. hear anything about it. I never even heard of it until it was uh, an Epic Games freebie a year or so ago. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'll try that. But again, the idea of early 20th century Victorian era doctor back from World War One that got your attention? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, a hundred years ago in London, vampire, you, you are a newly converted vampire and, but you're also a, a physician. You're a doctor. You've, you've taken the Hippocratic oath. Thou shall do no harm. <sighs> At this, Except when you're hungry. It's that it's that dichotomy that you have to struggle with as as the as the character. And some people might some players might just go through and just eat everybody. Right. You know, I haven't there are a couple times and killed a civilian yet. The only And people, that is so much XP. It is. It really it's is. So there's, much XP. There's some guy I ran across because I you you unlock as you have these conversations, it's a talking simulator too, because you, you talk <laughs> to everybody and there's, there's every person's got like three to six hints that once you unlock that information about those people and you, you heal any ailments that they have, like maybe somebody has got bronchitis, you're a doctor. So once you help them recover from that, uh, that bronchitis, their blood suddenly becomes very tasty and rich. And if you, then feed on that person you can earn thousands of experience points in one go and develop your character but if you choose like i'm doing is to like hold back on that stuff it makes the game harder because i don't have all of these elaborate I'm choosing the fluff over the crunch. I could just eat everyone and be completely super powerful right now and run through the game, but I'm choosing the fluff. There I are like at least being, two dudes who uh, I am surprised you haven't eaten yet because they're just dicks. Clay? Clay Cox, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the, the, uh, uh, the landlord guy. Oh, why well, I, I said if he was the first one that I would say I would consider eating. Yeah. I haven't yet. But I might I might. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bit of a fluff guy myself. You um, think? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh but but fluff only will get me to check something out doesn't necessarily get me to stay if that makes sense hmm. like i need the crunch to work with it or or i get frustrated and then i'll put it aside and that's kind of been how it's gone for me with with warhammer 40k as a main game because i played that like the tail end of second but really third fourth and fifth were my additions when i was golden time when i was like at my height i was playing all the time i yeah. was in a game club we were always building we we're always doing it's like that was the prime time for me and yes the ip of of warhammer 40k in general i find very fascinating i really like the 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 twists and turns of it and, and what you can do in it and the, the fact that it's a setting and not just a story so it doesn't matter you could do something in a small sector of space that is unique and the world is so big that it could be like well i've got these cavemen with laser swords like i can do what i want in, yeah. in the realm of it right but i only really play kill team right now because i like the rules of that game they're simple, they're fast, and they're compelling. And I find I was really good with 8th edition when it came back. It was simple, it was uh, streamlined, and I felt like I could play pretty easily. And then Games Workshop did a Games Workshop and just kept adding <laughs> layers of complication to everything. And yeah. I've, I've only played a couple games of 9th uh, of edition. Hmm. And 
it was it was fun and I enjoyed myself, but regular players of ninth have so much more calculus going on in their head because they've kept up with everything. And I was lucky. I was playing Imperial Guard, so my codex was from 8th edition still. Like, mm. no major changes had been made for the units that I was using. So I got to basically play from a book. And I didn't win any of the games I played, but I got close a couple times. Um, but yeah. it just... The crunch gets too complicated. So I stopped playing that, and I just play Kill Team if I play at all. It's kind of the same with D&D. I like D&D. I like the fact that I can create this cool universe. I don't get wrapped up in the Forgotten Realms. I don't get wrapped up in... in what was the original Greyhawk? universe? Greyhawk, yeah. I don't get wrapped up in any of that stuff too much. I just like the idea of the fantasy worlds that we've made for that. But the reason I keep playing is because whether it was... Advanced D and D, D twenty, or modern five E, the crunch has always been useful. We skipped fourth edition completely because that right. didn't work for us. We stuck with three point five and then jumped to five. You know, so like, <laughs> and again, there are a lot of really cool games that I just never got into because I may like what the story is, but I didn't have the interest in picking anything up because I didn't want to, the rules didn't appeal to me in any way, shape or form. Mm. So yes, I'm a fluff guy and I get really committed to the things that I like the fluff for, uh-huh. but if I'm going to play, it's gotta, it's gotta, the, the crunch has gotta be something that appeals to me, which I guess is kind of the worst I, too. I guess, uh, when it comes to, when it comes to Warhammer, you're the only person I've really ever played with. So I wouldn't be playing otherwise. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But I still enjoy the video games. Right. I mean, Space Marine, Martyr, uh, Cascade Demon Hunters. Those... Those are fun. Oh, uh, Dawn of War. Oh, those yeah. games are super fun for me, and yeah. I think those are pretty good. That is, those games are when somebody had a really good fluff idea and wanted to make a video game based on it. Totally, totally. And for me, I guess those are perfect marriages of crunch and fluff. Because so I developed oh. relationships with my Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. I mean, me and Iolanthus are bros. Right. And right. <laughs> and he's so, gonna be he's gonna be on that table trying so to take out some. Yeah, to yeah. the point where I'm painting an Iolanthus for this. So it, yeah, I don't know. Well, what do y'all think? What is your what what gets your fancy going? Are you a crunchy or are you a fluffy? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> that was- I almost got you twice. You gotta stop doing that. Let us know down in the comments Crunchy how that goes. Fluffy. <laughs> that's that's other tabletop things. <laughs> no games for old so, uh, Dan, it has been four weeks, and no one has had a comment about the title of this section yet, whether positive or negative. So yet again, this section is still called Stop We're Hyped About. No games for that name is still subject to change. By not speaking, the people have spoken. They have accepted this as the subject title. I get that. And yet... Dan, what are you hyped about this week? <laughs> I I feel like I'm cheating. Ooh, oh, 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 that's exciting. How I come? I feel like I'm cheating because I'm really hyped about... Okay. <laughs> All right. That, that Q4 channel growth, y'all, has been mind-blowing to me. We've got three times, more than three times now. 
yeah the the subs that we had this time a month ago yeah less than yeah because of mech warrior i am really excited to see the response for episode six because that's the first one with co-op play where jeff and scott join me in game and I hope you really enjoyed live chatting with Dan and I yesterday <laughs> during the uh, and, during the thing because if if you did, we're gonna do that more often. And I'm really sorry about that thing I said. I, I didn't I didn't mean it that way. We'll just I'll just get that out of the way now because you know how I am with words. <laughs> so, but I am. We had the three of us had a great time playing it and recording it. I'm hoping, and I actually had a fun time editing it together and this is the first one that i had to I, you know i had three different camera feeds that i had to you know i felt like a tv director i was like P-choo, right P-choo, right P-choo. and i hope that people like it and i hope that it attracts even more subs to the channel not that i'm wanting to turn this channel into mech warrior all the time but i would be totally happy to do more mech warrior episodes if that's what people are excited about because then you know there's others other maybe that points us in a direction of you know here's another game similar maybe not another mech game but something else that's also co-op that we could play and would attract a similar audience because that's what people enjoy so i feel like most of the time when i look at Let's play videos, playthroughs, walkthroughs, whatever you language you want to put on it. It's one person playing the game, like everything else I've done on this channel so far. Right. I very rarely see co-op gameplay on YouTube. I feel like the majority, the vast majority of gameplay videos are one person playing the game. And I will admit, I mean, uh, kind of R.I.P. Rooster Teeth. They've they're having some issues right now. But what yeah. got me super excited about playing GTA Online with this group of people was watching the Rooster Teeth team playing all the heists in GTA <laughs> Online. <laughs> Uh, that, that blew my mind. It sparked my imagination. I, I pestered. I pestered our dear friends. Get this game. Get this game. Because I wanted to do that. You really did too. And and we did it. Yep. We did it. And I think yep. everyone has had fun. But anyhow, I guess that's that's the main thing I'm hyped about is just to, just to see the reaction. I mean, if. If it crashes and burns, then fine. But I don't think it will. I think I think it'll get a good response because it's it's just fun seeing people do stuff like that. And when you get mul- multiple participants, it adds a certain energy to the experience. Yeah. Yeah. So. And of yeah. course, by the time this episode launches, we will know. It, we will know. We yes. will know. We will know. Yeah. Um, but, and so that's why I feel like it's cheating because we'll already know by the time this is out. <laughs> right. <laughs> by the time this right. is out. But, uh, you know, that's just, that's what I'm excited about. Hey, that's, that's what this whole section is about. Um, this was a tough one for me this week because, uh, uh you know, it's been a weird week. It's hmm. like holiday time and like, I feel like there hasn't been a lot going on. Um, but then I realized there was something that that I had been thinking about since I developed the outline for the show this week, and that is uh, Malifaux. I'm really hyped about Malifaux. What's that? You, Malifaux is a tabletop skirmish game oh. that is in the realm of uh, Victorian... Well, Victorian era steampunk. I've played it once with uh, an old neighbor of mine named Joel, and um, and 
it kind of plays into what we talked about in other tabletop things today in that it's a neat story Mm -hmm. with really cool like art and concepts and you're going to see some of those here and a really neat gaming system so instead of using dice it uses a deck of regular playing cards and okay. there's a mechanic to be able to flip a number of cards to see what your random result is. And it's really exciting and it's really fast. And the the game world is established enough. It's in its third edition now. Oh. That, like, there's a definitive backstory for all of the factions. But there's still enough wiggle room to be like, well, this may be a named character, but... It's somebody that I can still imprint on. And it's kind of neat because as the story progresses in Malifaux, they'll kill off characters. And I'm not really positive on that, actually. I'm still learning all about this. But it's this other world, other game, and uh, and something that has always been kind of in the back of my head since I played that one time. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really neat that you can have that one-time interaction that plants a seed and then out of nowhere you're like kind of want to get the english ivan core box kind of just (laughs) kind of just want to have that guy you know like it's also really affordable it is a mini game it's a mini game you said skirmish game so that suggests that there's miniatures on the table okay yeah 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 yeah. and the core boxes are really inexpensive it costs about it's less than 60 bucks to get a box of of the team miniatures Um, i guess when you compare it to something like kill team where the starter box is a 100 plus yeah yeah so it's it's uh it's neat it's really neat and um I'm I'm anxious to learn more about it. And hey, if any of you viewers are Malifo players and you want to tell me about how cool it is, like I played the English Ivan subfaction and thought that was pretty cool. He's got a little he's got a little bowler hat and through a scientific mistake, his shadow was separated from him. It became a separate entity. Oh. And it does really cool things, like it can absorb uh, other people's energy and and it can pop up in different places and it can call like shadow demons okay. um it's a it's yeah i i don't know what else to say other than it's really neat i really <laughs> like it but uh if you've got ideas well, for other factions that are cool piqued my attention i'm i'm gonna as soon as we cut here i'm gonna look up malifo that sounds sounds interesting yeah yeah, and it's so anyway, that that's that's what's got me hyped this week. That's cool. No games for old Steampunk, you said. Steampunky. Steampunky. It's got cowboys, it's got uh uh saloon girls who do magic. Um and uh are, are they are the miniatures like Warhammer size? Kind of like they are in typical. the 32 millimeter scale, but they're not heroic scale like Games Workshop stuff is. Their proportions are more realistic. So some of the models are actually a little fiddly to get together because they're really thin. They're they're uh-huh. they're more uh, uh, realistic isn't the word I want to use, but like the proportions are, if that makes sense. Um, so they can be a little fiddly, but. <laughs> Uh, but they are, they, yeah, it's the same same general size. Okay. Dan, we've successfully completed another episode of Tabletop Tuesday. I can't believe it. I know, right? We're five weeks in. This is happening. Second most popular show well on the whole channel. Well-oiled machine. Absolutely. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below about things we talked about in the episode. And we'll see you on Monday for Mech Warrior Monday. Yeah. We'll see you Tuesday for another episode of Tabletop Tuesday. We'll see you Wednesday for Vampire Wednesday. <laughs> and then uh, and then whatever other episodes we're going to fill in the rest of the week. Have a great rest of your week. And we'll see you next time. No games. Oh, no.